Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video Editor Studio and today I'm gonna share with you how to use the shapes tools in DaVinci Resolve. Let's check it out. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve right now we are on the Fusion page and I'm gonna share with you how to use the shape tools right here. There is 13 tools. I'm gonna run you through each of them, what they do, how to use them, so you can get a better understanding on how to play with shape and create shape animation in Resolve. This video is not gonna be a step-by-step -step guide. It's just gonna be uh, exploring each of those nodes. Let me know in the comment if you will be interested of me uh, trying to do different animation with this rectangle to give you uh, use cases. All right, so without further ado, let's start. So basically shapes are working the same way as 3D element. You need to have S render. So that's a specific node where uh, your shape need to go through before going to the media out if you want it uh, to be rendered. If I bring here a rectangle, for example, uh, there is nothing showing up on screen. We need to have it uh, going through to a S render so we can see the actual shape. It's very similar to what you can do with 3D elements in Fusion. So you have a couple of shapes you can choose from. You have the ellipse, which is basically a round circle. You have the S and gun, which is basically an octagon, and you have the star. So right now, I'm just gonna add a S render to each of them so you can see them. So the quick way to add any node will be to hit shift space and then to look for what you're looking for. So S render in this case, and then we can just bring that specific node right here. I'm gonna do that for each of them. So now, as you can see, we have the star, we have the octagon, we have the circle, and we have the rectangle. This is the three shape starting point that you can uh, start using. Now you can create more shape by modifying those starting points or by combining some of them. So here, for example, the star, we can adjust the number of points, we can adjust the depth, we can adjust the border width, and you can really make a bunch of modification for each of them to create the shape that you want. Now let's focus on the rectangle shape so I can show you the other node and what they do. So let's move the viewer right here to the S rectangle. Here, one node that you're gonna use fairly often, in my opinion, is the S transform. Uh, it's gonna be for anything you know related to, to the size. So here you can adjust the width, you can adjust the height, uh, you can adjust the position, and it's just like a very great way to move around and animate your shape. Personally, I will basically use the parameter in the shape node to create the shape that I want, and then I will do all my animation and my keyframing on the S transform. Another node that is quite useful is the S outline. So here, we're just gonna bring the S outline, and as the name is stating it, it's just creating an outline of the shape, the current shape that we have. So right now we had a rectangle, so it's creating an outline of that rectangle. You can obviously adjust the width, you can adjust the corner radius to adjust the corner right here. You could actually make it a circle if you want. And here reducing, for example, the width down to zero and you have a circle. That's why in my opinion, I don't really get the point of the S ellipse because the S rectangle is just a starting point for, uh, in my opinion, most shapes. Because you can basically do a S ellipse with a S rectangle by simply here adjusting the corner radius. Another node that you can use is right here, the S jitter, which is basically gonna help you to animate some uh, random jitter into uh, your shape. So here you can switch from fixed to random and then select which axis you want to be uh, jitter. So here we're gonna put some jitter on the X and the Y axis and uh, randomly it adding some jitter to the shape. So that's something that could be very useful to animate your shape, but I don't use it very often because in my opinion, it's not the kind of animation that I like. I like stuff that are clean. So yeah, it's just basically not really my jam. Another node is the S expand, uh, but that's something I don't really use because I don't really get the point of it. Uh, so here I'm gonna add it to the S stars instead of the rectangle to show you what it does. So basically it's very similar to just a border width adjustment. Uh, you can just raise here the amount. And as you can see, it just like raise the overall uh, size, kind of like the border width, it's changed the border. But as you can see, if I go here to the star and I adjust the border width, the bottle is the exact same thing. So I'm not sure uh, what's the point of it. It could be useful, I would imagine, you know, for animation. If you want to uh, make an animation on the bottle with, but you're already using the bottle with, or you want to export the bottle with uh, in your macro, for example. But yeah, basically that's something I rarely use. Another note that this time is very useful is here to S duplicate. So it's basically duplicating your shape. You can choose the number of copies. So here, for example, if we want to have five copies, we can have five copy, and then we can just displace it with using the offset right here 
So right now I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller so we can see what we're doing. And going back to the S duplicate here, we can select the number of copy that we want. Uh, we can then, you know, adjust the position between those copies. You can adjust the X offset and the Y offset. You can adjust the size. You can also use, for example, expression here to link those two together, uh, retain, you know, like the circle size. But here you're gonna get like some relativity, you know, going from bigger to smaller. You can change the axis mode. It basically gonna um, change the behavior and how the parameter are interacting with each other uh, from progressive, uh, from origin absolute, from relative or absolute. So yeah, just a very, very great tool and it can help you to create actually like a different shape. If I take, for example, here the SN gone, and if I add a S duplicate to it, for example, I'm gonna here make one copy and then I'm gonna make some rotation and then I'm displacing this. And we have now a different shape combining those two S gone. And then I can add, for example, here a S transform and then we can just place that in the middle right here and we could have some sort of, you know, glasses. And that could be here, for example, the beginning of some glasses or some eyes, for example. Now, along the same line, another one that is very useful, let's go back to the rectangle. And I'm actually gonna make it a rectangle again by here, resetting the corner radius. I'm gonna reduce the size. And we could here now use the S grid, for example. And what it does essentially is creating a grid. So that will be very, very nice to create some background. Or as soon as you start to have composition where you require to have a lot of time the same elements. So now you can adjust the number of line that you want, uh, both horizontally and vertically. And you can then adjust also the amount of space that you want uh, between those shapes. That's a very, very useful tool because imagine how long it will take to just uh, do each one of those shapes and then make sure that they are all you know aligned properly it will just be a real pain in the ass and now you can just do all those modifications very quickly and here we could add for example the s transform in between and then we could just change the size of this shape there is just a lot of things that you can do with those please let me know in the comment if you would like me to do uh, a video creating an animation with uh, the s shapes and now the two last s nodes are basically the s merge which is the exact same thing as a merge to you know combine shapes so here for example if we wanted to combine uh, two rectangle we can just bring another rectangle link them together and we have now two rectangle within the same composition again that's something that you will use here uh, to combine multiple shapes together and create a more complex shape for example so here if i were to uh, adjust the size of it and adjust the position uh, we create now you know a new shape and if i add here uh, s transform after this merge uh, now we're just adjusting the size of those two together and not individually it's like a brand new shape so that's how you will create more complex shape inside of davinci resolve by combining multiple shapes together another way to combine shape will be here to use not the s merge but a s boolean so i'm just gonna add that right here i'm gonna link here for example a s star instead so we can see really the difference between those two so what it does essentially is depending on the blending mode of the S boolean, it will combine the shape differently. So for example, right now I have my rectangle and I have my star right here. And basically the S boolean right now is intersecting where those two shapes are meeting each other. So in that space, they are now creating a new shape. You can choose here from union which will basically do uh, something similar to the S merge and combine them together. You could use subtract. So now it's basically subtracting one shape in another. So here the S star basically is taking over on the rectangle and cutting the rectangle together. And XR is doing basically the opposite and where the two shapes are meeting, uh, it's deleting this part and keeping the two other parts. And that's it. That's all the shape nodes available in DaVinci Resolve. I hope this video gives you a nice introduction on how to use shape and what you can do with them. Let me know in the comment if you would like to see me make more video about shapes and showing you how to use them in composition. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transitions, and templates, but only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack containing a compilation of 20 titles curated from our library. Link in the description below or at videodigitalstudio.com.